First of all, I want to say happy birthday because it's your birthday today. It's your birthday. You. It's your birthday. <laughs> so it makes it an extra special day for us to have you on here today. Thank you so much for coming on. I am excited to be here. What else would I want to be doing on my birthday? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, like I don't know. know. Eating some cake. <laughs> it's an honor to be on here. Really. It's, we're excited to be, uh, you know, able to share our story and especially share it on your um, wonderful podcast. Thank you. So I, I'm like, of course, doing my due diligence and researching and looking throughout your history. You have, I love the fact that you have a career that is so vast and so different and and in different stages. Uh, To me, I actually think that reinvention is uh, imperative for anybody's growth. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that you were involved with technology for many years. You've evolved and you've been the CEO of Urban U for the past three, three or four years is 2017. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. Four years. So mm-hmm. I, I would love to kind of get a little bit of a, like a, a, your take on your journey and, and how this all kind of led up to where you're at right now. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. The word you said was reinvention. I mean, as people, you know, we are constantly trying to connect with others. Like that's, that's our job. I think as humans is like, how do we connect with people? Um, and then as we grow as people, we are always, you know, connecting in different ways. So, you know, I did, I, I think someone, a mentor told me early on, like what you're doing today will not be doing what you're doing tomorrow. So do a really good job today because you want good jobs tomorrow. And so, so that I was stuck with me because they were right. I'm not doing what I started out doing. I started out, um, I have my business degree and um, master's from um, master's in business um, from UCLA. And you know, I always thought I was going to go up the corporate ladder. Like that was the thing I was going to do. And, um, you know, I think there was a point where I was getting there. I was really starting to uh, have that traction in the career. And, you know, I just kind of turned back to look forward in my life. And I turned back to my family, um, all years of, I have to say the word, is that everyone says cereal entrepreneur. But when I say cereal, I always think of my kids when they were little, they used to say, mom, you eat cereal for a job. See, but I honestly think, I really do believe there are some people born in this world that were just born to be entrepreneurs. They might sit there and think, oh, I want to be in that corporate environment, but they're born to be that. Do you feel that way? I did. And that's when I took that pause. I was like, okay, I'm going up this ladder and I, this is good, but this not, it just didn't feel right. And I had to look forward as to what I really wanted in life. And I wanted the flexibility, um, to be able to go and, you know, and mobility to be able to move around. And I saw my parents having that. I saw my grandparents having that on both sides. So I realized, you know, being an entrepreneur is yeah, what I wanted to do. And, and so you're right, you know, constantly, we're constantly reinventing ourselves based on, you know, kind of needs that are in front of us. But I think the biggest thing, you know, of reinvention is, you know, someone will get into the career maybe five or 10 years and they're just not happy. And you have to say, but it's frightening to suddenly take that shift, isn't it? Oh, for sure. And I think that's like, how do you do that? How do you sit? Because in retrospect, we look at him, we're like, of course they did that. Of course they just (laughs) moved on to it. But, but really in all honesty, in that moment, that's terrifying. Oh, it is. It is. Cause you're like, what am I going to do? And what does, like, how am I going to fund this idea that I have? How am I, you know, because you really, if you're getting paid, obviously from a corporation, that's, you know, that's your funding on a you know, daily basis, weekly basis. So now you're shifting into something else to be an entrepreneur and you have big ideas, but you know, the number one reason entrepreneurs don't succeed is because of funding. Um, but I realized through con- deep connections that I had that I was able to make some of that happens. So yeah, just constantly looking at who you are and, and not being afraid to step out there. I, you know, there's this kind of self branding item going on and it's been going on for a long time. Um, but you know, how do you, when you're shifting and changing is something I thought about, um, is now who am I as a brand? Like, who am I as a person? Am Mm -hmm. I, you know, really, I'm not that corporate person anymore, but now I'm this entrepreneurial person. And am I really, um, well, Am I really that person? Because they've everyone's known me over here. So it's that imposter syndrome that you kind of get. I know we all know. Oh that. yeah. No, that's a big topic. It is. It, it is hard. And and I, I'm curious, what is your 
when you're looking at that, because I do feel, especially with the prevalence of social media and, and everything is out there, you know, back in the day, we had a resume, we sent it in, whatever, (laughs) or we made our business plan with the bank, whatever. But in all honesty, self-branding is a really big deal when you're trying to reinvent yourself. And it, I'm not saying that everybody has to jump on social media and do a rebranding of themselves, but, um, entrepreneurs, I would imagine that's very important. Well, I think everyone should be doing it, right? I mean, because like I said before, the job you have today is probably not the job you're going to have tomorrow, whether you're in a corporation or you decide to step out and do your own thing. So that clout of a network is, it's the only thing we really have. And we have our knowledge in our head. We have our schooling that we went to and did, you know, that, that all helps. But when you go, I would say the thing that helped me the most was that shift to have this network of people out there who I could say, Hey, you know, help me with this part. Um, and I think I can help you with this. Right. So that, uh, if I had any advice to someone, it would definitely say if you're, you know, rebranding yourself will be that much easier if you, um, consider the depth and breadth of your network. Um, because that's important that allows you to change a lot faster. So when you were going from your previous career in the corporate world and you're thinking, okay, you know, I, I, quite frankly, I'm dying of curiosity of what made you decide on making Urban U, which is a Medi Spa. Um, and you have three of them, correct? We have three locations. We have a large digital product as well, a um, large storefront digitally, and then we're acquiring others right now. So, so what made you go, like, what was the journey where you sat there thinking, okay, this is where I want to move into. I mean, obviously there must've been a passion involved in order to want to do that. But also again, going from the corporate world to a totally different, Mm -hmm. you know, um, space, so to speak, a different field. How did you make that shift and rebrand yourself? Well, I had done it a little bit before that. So prior to when I did shift, just as a background, I, you know, I decided to go into looking for gaps in the market space. So looking for gaps to me meant where are people not filling a need and how can I fill that need? So as an entrepreneur, I'm like, okay, who am I in this entrepreneurial world? And what, because there any, anyone can come up with great ideas, right? I mean, a right. great idea is one thing, but how do you execute that idea? And so I decided to focus on what, there's probably already products out here and the consumers are saying that's interesting, but they're not, there's a gap somewhere. So what I started doing is acquiring companies that look like there was a gap and I could fix that gap and then market it deeper. And so I did that for a handful of years and then I moved into Urban U and really it was a gap. I found a gap. I was going from kind of location to location, looking for great services. Um, I, there was one medis spa. I went to get my injections and one, I went to get facials and one, and I said, well, how, and it's, and the difference was, is the high level, I would say kind of hoity toity, uh, med spa. And then there's the very grassroots, um, oh, and the grassroots, the right word is maybe clinical, um, med spa. So you have these two and we said, okay, the gap is, is let's become street level. Let's become conversational. Let's open up. So people who want to have these services don't feel like, oh, it's a doctor's appointment or I'm, I'm just too expensive for me. So that was, that's a very valid point. I never really thought of it that way. Cause it does, it feels like either you're going to some spa. Yeah. Um, which is not, a, it doesn't appeal to everybody. Right. And then there, there's the other that is literally going to finding a dermatologist or a doctor in specific. Right. Right. Yeah, no. And so we just said, let's create that street level conversation, um, you know, brand and create a conversation around it. And so that's how we started, you know, urban you, it's just really great products and services that fill that market. And we've, you know, grown in three years, well, excuse me, four years um, to over the top 250 in the nation with Allergan, which is one of our business partners, um, which is huge. There's 50,000 practices out there. So you can tell that gap we found was extreme. It needed to be filled um, because people are wanting the services. So from there, and I'd be remiss if we did not speak of your podcast, which is the beauty <laughs> standard. Yes. And, and that is yet another avenue for you to really talk and speak to that beauty space. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about the beauty sp- um, standard and what your philosophy for it is. 
Okay. Well, the beauty standard was created um, based on the fact that we all each have our own beauty standard. We're not, Urban U is not creating the beauty standard. Um, We definitely look for trends and we want to bring people into those trends, but you create your own standard. So what you might think to be important um, might be or might not be for me. So we're bringing people into that conversation um, of CEOs from companies or, you know, from really high, wonderful companies, high level companies, such as Olaplex, you and I had a great chat and, you know, chance to talk. So bringing them in and saying, Hey, here's how I started it, or here's what our brand stands for. But also we bring businesses in and we've brought breweries in, we've brought in distilleries saying, how did you start? How did you step out? Like, so really helping empower people, not just to be beautiful because of all these wonderful products out there now, but to be beautiful inside and be really thoughtful about, you know, what is it I can, you know, kind of grab one seed from this conversation of a podcast and bring it forward. So, yeah, I feel it's, um, you know, setting your own standard. So one of the things I did actually, I've listened to a few of your episodes, but one of the ones that really stuck out was actually your very first one. Um, I actually really enjoyed that one. And what I loved about it is that you had a focus that was being courageous in your life and career and how a lot of women are told no, which is very true. Mm -hmm. So what I'm curious as a person, I would imagine you probably heard no. (laughs) And I have a strange feeling my gut is telling me you are one of those people that were like, hmm. Yeah, no, (laughs) I'm going to go ahead. (laughs) But so tell me what you think is the difference between those that accept no and those that break through. Because I think it really, there is something in me that all of us need to acquire in order to be the ones that can break through. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, God, if I said that, that was really smart. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) You did. (laughs) Um. No, I, I, you're right. I always say no is a, a maybe a roundabout, you know, there's a way to get through that, you know, a no is not an end end game. Um, but how do you break through that? I really believe it's just the confidence. And sometimes it, if we go back to that network and saying, okay, someone said no to me and why is there no ask why, right? Why is there no? And then maybe go out to your network and say, help me become smarter in this because I really don't understand this. Or I really want, this is what I want. Can you help me get there? Again, people want to connect. They want to help you. So go find those people who can help you. And, and usually when you go back to that, no, you can now kind of sidestep it, go around it because you're power, you're more powerful inside. You have more knowledge. You understand what the no means and they'll see that people will see that you're, um, you've come up to play the game. I do feel like though, there, there are a lot of people that just instinctually like say no, or that's crazy. That's not the right idea, whatever it may be. Yes. Um, but they're not necessarily seeing your vision and it's not about you. It's about them. Yep. I agree. Um, so when you're looking at your network and you're looking for those people that empower you, um, That's a hard one to navigate, isn't it? Because you never know when you get that bad apple in there. (laughs) No, you're right. I mean, you have to have people who are on you're always going to be on your side. I mean, that's why mentors, you know, mentors, someone to help you, you know, go in that right direction, a coach, which is a big difference between a coach. Um, someone who can, so a mentor, as you know, is someone who's in the business world like you, and they can be younger, they can be older. I mean, there's a whole variations of different places they can be, and they can just kind of see things and help you through that, maybe based on their experience. And a coach is someone who like, this is their job, right? This is their job to help you walk through this. Um, and sometimes uh, there's just a champion in your life, like my significant other is my champion. So, you know, I do believe that it is hard to get the word no, but the resources are out there. People will support you in doing that. So build up your confidence. It's, it's that's the biggest thing. I mean, you hear of all these stories. I went knocked on a hundred doors, you know, and I got no. When I knocked on a hundred one, and I got yes. So when do you give up? Do do you continue to? So if you're knocking on doors and you go all the way to fifty, you're like, okay, this isn't working, right? I mean, this right. is kind of a point. You just say this isn't working, so you got to shift directions, try something new, grab some more knowledge, go back out and try twenty five more, and then you shift and change um, in that process, and then the no's become yeses. I think a, a big part of that is 
identifying the fact that sometimes your idea could be amazing, but it might not be fine tuned enough and that you do need to be able to shift and change wherever um, is needed in order to meet the market that you're trying to um, appeal to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I just, I heard a story in someone who said he knocked on 789 doors before he got a yes. And that's a lot. (laughs) And when I say knock on doors, it could have been phone calls or emails or whatever, but you know, literally had to go through all of those. So it takes a while to shift and change. Well, we've, we've spoken a lot about, I mean, even before we came on here about empowering women, I know we both feel really strongly about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, particularly with women that are in leadership and are going into careers, you really want to foster that on your team. Now, as the CEO of Urban U, which is in the beauty space. And you're, I would imagine you have a whole gamut, everything from, you know, the ones that are in the back rooms doing all the numbers and and everything like that. And, you know, marketing, whatever, but you also have your staff, which are estheticians and, you know, everybody that's involved in that beauty space. What would, as, as a CEO there, can you share with us like your blueprint to success when it comes to empowering these women and helping them grow. I know we talked a little bit about um, branding and I know you were saying something about you were mentoring a lot of your team mm-hmm. with that. Can you expand on that? Yeah, for sure. So we do. So just as our culture, our culture definitely at Urban U, we believe in empowerment. And that word can seem, um, you know, can just seem like a word that's out there now. Everyone's saying empowerment. Like, what does that really mean? Because to me, it just could be like, okay, you're saying go team, right? Like, I don't, what do you mean? To build a culture of a company that empowers people is huge. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little story and I'll, I'll go fast, but have you ever watched the movie Mean Girls? Yes. It's been years, but I have. <laughs> there's a lot of great one-liners in there, but Tina Fey, there's a point that this group of Mean Girls accuses her of selling drugs and um, it's not true. She doesn't do it. And later on, she confronts them and says, why did you do that? And they said, well, you, you pushed me too far outside of my comfort zone. And so that was our only way to like, kind of get you to stop. And so our first year at Urban U, they start calling me the pusher based on Tina Fey. <laughs> I'm so, Tina you know, Fey's my favorite. <laughs> I love her. And so, and I, we do, and we do that. We do that in a very real way at Urban U. Um, we're always saying, you know, work yourself out of a job, which means work so hard that the next opportunity opens up for you. Um, we, you know, help people through this really vulnerable time of 19 to 30, where you're still trying to figure out who you are, what job do you want? Is it the right job? You're now navigating work and personal relationships. So, so I am, again, I take the the title as an honor of being the pusher. Um, We help people really evaluate their choices and, you know, their best selves. So, you know, we, we do that as a culture. It's not just me anymore. It's our management team. It's our, everyone in location, you know, a lot of times when you have, we've all females, we'd love more, we'd love male on our team, but, um, you know, you can get real chatty and, and snippety and back talky. And, and honestly, we, we have tried to avoid most of that and change that to be, okay, well, I see your problem. Here's what I can do to help you, or here's thoughts for you. So I, I hear it. Like I hear mm-hmm. our other teammates between providers to, like you said, kind of the team behind the scenes they're encouraging each other. And that is, that means we did our job to show empowerment and that's going to outlive, you know, me empowering people, which feels great that it took a long time to build that culture, but, um, you know, we'll touch hundreds of, of women who again, have been pushed out of the workforce because of COVID. Um, but we'll help some of these, our future women are become super strong. And, you know, we have had a a person who, when she first came in, like literally would look down all the time, barely looked up. And she came to us two months ago with shoulders back, smile on her face and said, I'm leaving Urban U to start my own business. And wow. I, we were so happy for her. And we've had a few people who have left to start their own business. So I, I do know there's a big difference between empowering and just saying the word to, to do it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, and that, and that is something I want to touch on because it, that again, a great podcast on the beauty standard. And, and it really does dive deep into a lot of subjects I care about. And one of those 
conversations, I heard you talking about how really teaching your staff and yourself as well, when communicating with your clients, um, there is a level of trust that has to be there because that is part of the empowerment, right? If you don't have trust in the person that you're working with or servicing Mm -hmm. um, and you're not honest and, and being candid, Uh, that there can be trust loss. You might be giving them everything they want, but what they want might not necessarily be the right thing. Right. Could you like expand that? Cause that was an interesting conversation about, I think you were saying something about you wanted to get a particular service done. And the person said, no, you don't need it. (laughs) Yes. You know, actually I remember that that was uh, one of who she's a business partner of mine here at urban U and she um, she said, you're absolutely beautiful the way you are. And I, I remember looking at her and saying, I want you on our team at Urban U. And that was prior to starting Urban U. So we were lucky enough to have her join our team. But, you know, I built trust with her and I knew she'd be able to build trust with our, you know, all of our guests, but as well as she's built out her um, team of injectionists. So when it comes to that, I mean, because I think that this is something that everybody needs to hear sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, Like, uh, yeah, sure. There are some people that will always take things to extremes and, you know, God love them. That's what they want to do. But I think honestly, most people want to come into these beauty spaces and realize, like actualize what they're thinking of who they are, you know, outwardly. Right. So, but how did they actualize that? Like how, what kind of conversations does your team have with them? Because sometimes we're looking at so much on oh, media yeah. now that we're like, okay, I want to get my lips plumped up, my cheeks. <laughs> I want Botox everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> freeze it in time, right, right. <laughs> you know, and, and we go through this process because we see all these other people, but what's good for someone might not be good for them. How do you have those conversations and, and build that trust? Because I think that that in itself is an endorsement of any place. You're not just handing out, you know, you, you get a candy, you get a can, or you get a cupcake, you get a cupcake, you know, no, everybody, you know, should get what they're supposed to. Yeah, no, actually we have been, I would say a lot of businesses in this high, you know, the med spa business is extremely high growth. I mean, there's a ton out there and, there's a lot of irregulation in it right now too. And, and Urban U is working to help with that. Um, so we can help regulate the way people and the outcomes that people get because um, some people are just in it for the money. Uh, and which is unfortunate because they they may have been nurses or whatever in previous times. And now they they know they can do, you know, do these services. So they're just out there doing what they can and putting too much in people. I mean, just literally too much. And so we as a company we've put everyone through what's called a wellness consultation. It's not an intake consultation. It's not an aesthetic. It's a wellness. And the reason it's a wellness is because we want to get to know you. We want to get who you are, what's going on in your life. Like, let's get below the surface besides I want bigger lips. Tell us what, tell us why, what's going on. And so really understanding that, then we can really craft a journey that will be right for them. So we have, um, we have said no to people just, and I say, no, it's, you know, well, based on you're telling me, you know, this here. isn't really what you want. Yeah, you really <laughs> able to try this journey. We'll try one or two syringes for X, Y, and Z. Um, and then if you still want more plumpness, let's you know do that on your next time. It costs us more money. Obviously, every time we net more money, it's awesome to have our guests back in. But if we could do all of those procedures in one sitting, it was, you know, it's it's a great, it's a great outcome for us, not for the guests. So we're I'd, we'd rather take more time with our guests and understanding them and building that trust. Um, Cause in the end, that's their outcome is our billboard. You know, they're walking around feeling confident and, you know, skipping and singing Kumbaya. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so for any of our listeners, if they, you know, are not in your area, so urban U is not necessarily accessible to them. Where would they find that kind of place? That's that middle ground that you speak to, that it's not necessarily going to a luxury spa or, you know, going to a doctor. Well, first of all, I think do your research. I mean, look, there's a ton of places on the internet. 
you know, look for, you know, places that have good reviews, talk to friends who've had procedures before, you know, what their outcomes have been. And then Urban U, we are growing. So we might be in locations soon. So keep an Ooh, eye on that. That would be exciting. <laughs> Come to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I will love it. I'd love to do that. But Urban U for me is our website, our digital presence. And I'll talk to that because we created um, what are called experience boxes. So we actually have a box with three, four boxes, excuse me, um, three that are fo- focused on the body and one that is focused on sexual wellness. But one of the boxes is a Botox in a box. So all the products in here are professional grade products that help you between doing a peel, you know, those luxury professional grade products for fine lines and wrinkles. Everything is in this box that goes to your home. And then as well, when you go back to our website, you have to think of it as the Peloton of beauty because it has videos of our estheticians showing you how to use these products. So you can do a five minute class, you can do a 10 minute class. So it's really the concept of Peloton, um, but it's in the aesthetics world. So you can get the box, get the experience for Botox in a box. We have facial fitness, which is like, um, you know, work your muscles out in your body. You can work the muscles in your face too. It's a very organic, uh, great way to keep the muscles lifted. Um, and then the other one is a body box, which is fantastic for any time of year. Honestly, I love that box. And then we have the women's sexual wellness box, which we just launched. And that has been fantastic to see people. Um, when I say people, my generation, um, we didn't talk about sexual wellness at all. No. So a lot of the younger generation, they are talking about it and they're very open as to, you know, these are the products we want. So I love that box because it is an empowerment for even someone of my generation. I'm listening to our teams and they're talking about these products and I'm getting red, you know, and now I'm like, oh, you know, we can talk about it because they've empowered me to be okay with it. Um, so if we're not in your area, you can always go to Urban U for me and um, pull that up and take a look at what we offer. That's pretty neat. I actually like the concept of having like individual box to kind of deal with anything that it is that you're looking for. Actually, I thought that the the concept of the exercises for your face is interesting. It kind of reminds me of going back to stuff my mom used to say, mm-hmm. you know, oh, you got to do certain exercises to keep your face, um, it, I guess, strong. And every, yeah. like you said, everything lifted. Yep. Yeah. The circulation. I, I wish I did it years ago. <laughs> I, know. I think it might be too late for me now. So no, yeah. you're good. <laughs> you're fantastic. So what, what, what is your hopes? What is your hopes for the future? I mean, like I said, you're, you're constantly reinventing, which is pretty exciting to watch. So what is everybody going to be excited to watch you do next? Um, I think I've kind of thrown it in a few times. We're growing. We're definitely going to be growing. So look out for Urban U. You know, go to our website and see our new locations that will be popping up relatively soon. Um, and that's, you know, that's exciting. I, I'm excited to, again, take our cultural um, parts and bring that on a national level to empower women throughout the country. And, and that I think it's great that you can have like more nowadays, it's more of an open conversation than like, you know, even as much as even five, 10, definitely. But five years ago, it was still a taboo conversation to talk about when you were getting anything done. Yes. You know, Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's so much more open and so much more accepted. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm sure you find a lot of med spas down where you are and people used to kind of, like you said, hi, do a house party. Right. And now they're like, Hey, I'm going in. It's, it's really not a big deal. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming out on your birthday and you're going to have, I know a very wonderful and exciting day. And, uh, I thank you very much for coming on today. Thank you. I appreciate it very much.